All right, so uh, we've removed the brakes here. We've uh, removed the wheel, which is 21 millimeter wheel nuts, followed by the brake caliper next, which is 14 millimeter bolts. There's two of them. And then once we get that out, I've removed the pads and then removed the caliper adapter bracket, which is 17 millimeter bolts. Uh, once we get that off, we can then remove the disc. Uh, now I do use uh, a small bolt with a 12 millimeter head that actually threads into the rotor and pushes the rotor off of the face of the spindle and makes for easy uh, removal. Once that's off, I clean the surface of the spindle so that we have a fresh mating surface for the new disc to go onto, and that uh, prevents any sort of possibility of um, run out, which would give you a pulsation in the brake pedal. So now uh, I'm gonna be cleaning these up. You can see I've just gone over the caliper with a wire wheel, got all the uh, dirt and crud off of there and hit it with some paint, make it look nice. And I've also put a little bit of surface guard on the spindle itself, taking care not to put any onto the wheel studs themselves. So just uh, make note of the orientation of where these clips lie. Uh, you can see that the ones on this side are different than the ones over here. They don't have this uh, cutout, which really doesn't make a difference. There's uh, kind of no difference um, one has like a hook down to the side the other one doesn't and uh, one thing you might notice is that from side to side the pins one will have a rubber and one will not and uh, in this case you really need to pay attention because they're different lengths and what can happen is if you switch these around when you're putting this thing back together the bore depths are actually different and you'll be able to stick them in but uh, you'll notice, see how I can bottom this out? Well, if I put that in this hole, you see how it hits? It's not going in all the way. You will be able to jam the brake caliper on there, but it's going to apply the brakes slightly and you'll burn up your brake pads in no time. So very, very important that you pay attention to the length of those pins and where they go into. Um, it's a good idea to keep track of what side these come off of. You can use a paint pen or something like that if you want, or just set them aside. See, I have these ones are off the driver's side or left side of the vehicle. These ones are off of the right side of the vehicle. So very important to uh, make sure that everything goes back into the proper locations. Crazy. All right, we got some... Uh, some lube on these pins, not a whole lot, just enough. And uh, also, like I say, we've reconditioned these rubbers so that they're, they're nice and clean. We've got fresh lube in there. The bores of the caliper adapter brackets have been cleaned. And we just slide that in. See, we move nice and freely there. And uh, I'm just putting some grease around the ends of these pins because they are uh, unpainted bare metal. But uh, we got our caliper brackets all painted up. Now we just uh, stick some clips in there and uh, we'll be ready to install on the top. So there is a certain way that these go in. Just pay attention. Um, I don't think you can stick them in backwards, but obviously we don't want the tang facing the inside or it will run into the disc and that'll be bad. Um, one thing I will tell you though, is if you're painting your brackets, do not spray a lot of coats underneath of where these clips sit. Uh, if you do multiple, multiple coats of paint, it will build up and it'll actually constrict brake pads and uh, cause them to hang up. All right, so we've got the disc on here. Um, and then this is completely uh, personal preference, whether you want to put a nut on here to keep the disc engaged onto the, the surface of the spindle at all times. I like it because it's not flopping around. It helps you uh, install this bracket nicer. So we get the, the bolts in there, the 17 mil bolts in the back, and those get torqued down to 77 foot pounds. And then once we're tightened there, 
we'll get our uh, brake pads and uh, there is um, clips on the ends. There are squealer tabs, but they also act as a as like a spring. So it's important which direction you put these on. What you want to do is have them like this with the spring facing the top. And the reason you do that is when you're driving down the road, which way does the disc spin? It's going this way. So with the spring pressure pushing down, the pads will always be seated in the bottom of the bracket. And when you hit the brakes, there's no room for the pad to go down because it's already seated. Now, if you have these backwards like this, the spring pressure will keep the pad pushed up against the top of the bracket. And when you hit the brakes, what happens? The brake pad shifts downwards slightly, just a small amount, but it's enough to give you an audible click noise every time you hit the brakes. It's very annoying. So make sure, think about it, make sure you put the brake pads in the proper way. I am using a uh, copper anti-seize on these pads, just on the tips of them. Uh, once again, sort of a personal preference on what you would like to use but that's just what i've been using for a long time it's what i know works and a uh, little bit of lube goes a long way there you go we got her uh, torqued up there 77 foot pounds and uh, we got our pads in there so the next step is push this uh caliper pistons back. Now there is a tool for that. Okay. So this kit by Matco comes with a bunch of different adapters and none of them fit this Toyota, which is great. Um, but it'll work anyways. So all we're going to do is move this adjuster back so this plate is up against the housing. And then we just push them back in. Simple as that. You could use uh, channel locks if you want, or a C clamp, um, or if you have really nice calipers, like on my Lexus, you just push them back by hand. So you just start twisting. And you can see, there we go. And we just go kind of slow so that it doesn't push the other caliper out at the same time. There's one. And we'll do the other side here. These are pushing back very nice. You can get a, a feel for bad calipers. If it's really hard to push back, you know it's probably time to change them. They get uh, rust that will get in behind this rubber boot right here. And then it gets on the bore and the piston has a hard time uh, getting past that, so. All right, and we can take this thing out and uh, we can install our now. Uh, we have these little springs that we got to put in here and uh, they just keep the pads uh, spread apart when you're not on the brakes so that they don't drag on the on the rotor so simple enough they just pop into these little holes and uh, you just want to make sure that um, you're holding the brake pads while you do this because if you let go it's just gonna spring them out and uh, yeah we don't want that so now, carefully, we install our brake caliper on here. Just like so. And then we'll grab our bolts and uh, install those and torque them down to 25 foot-pounds.
Okay, so I do have these wrenches. They're a very, very slim wrench made by Olsa Tools. And they come in very handy for holding these uh, slider pins. Keeps them from spinning, really. So we'll get our torque wrench set up here. There you go. A lot of times without this slider pin just spins and spins and spins. You need to hold it somehow and regular wrenches are too thick. So these come in handy. Go check out their website for uh, great deals on tools. All right. This is also an important step before we put the wheel on. You can see the corrosion that's inside of here. Now this isn't very bad, but when you get a lot of it on there and you put the wheel on, tighten everything down, the corrosion has a tendency to shift after you drive it for a little while. And once the rim settles, can end up loosening the wheel nuts off. And uh, that's a bad day when your wheel nuts come off. So very important that you clean this off. You can use sandpaper or something, a uh, Scotch-Brite pad or something to get it off. So I'm just using this little roll-off disc and I'm just going over it. <laughs> get this uh, set up here we get our wheel nuts started there's one more important thing about your wheel nuts there's a little washer that's on there this washer needs to be able to move freely if it sees you need to get new wheel nuts because you will not be able to achieve the proper amount of torque if they are seized once we get these on here we will uh, snug them down um, and then we'll lower the band down here and torque them down to 76 foot pounds. Now we're just gonna torque these wheels, 76 foot pounds. And there we go. All right, uh, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'd be glad to answer them. If you like this content, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button.